the fight, but he has suffered greatly by this stop. On the 32nd lap, Paul Tracy and Johansson in. Bobby Ray Hall's stop is complete as he roars back into the fight. Waiting now for the stop by the leader, Emerson Fittipaldi and Nigel Mansell, who has moved into second place. And here comes Fittipaldi on. Emerson Fittipaldi on the way in. Again, we check the speed. He's okay also. That's a real concern here with the Penske crew. We don't see any changes taking place. It should be a standard. Fill it up with fuel and four-tire change. Everything's smooth so far. None of the frustration like we saw with Paul Tracy. Our leader's waiting for that last bit of fuel. He's on the ground. He's gone. Let's go to Gary. Nigel Nansel is in. He radioed said it's touchdown time. Here he is for his first service of the day. They talked about a worker bill change at the rear wing, then decided not to. They're keeping the balance just the same. He's gone in 15.8 seconds, Paul. And look how carefully Emerson Fittipaldi came out of the pit. Nigel Mansell comes up to speed carefully as well. Remember, these are cold tires, and that's a very sharp corner that they have to adjust for right out of the pit lane. Something unusual Mansell has to deal with. Remember, every time he makes a pit stop in Formula One, the tires are almost up to working temperatures because of the expensive warmer blankets they use in the pit lane. He doesn't have that luxury here. New leader is this car, Mario Andretti. He has not yet stopped. He is due in for a stop at any time. Probably on this lap, he makes his turn into the corner. So now the leader, Mario Andretti, comes down into the pits. Robbie Gordon, driving for A.J. Foyt, comes in behind him. Gordon closed up as close to uh, Mario as he could. Now Kerry Gerald waits for Mario. Paul, we see the nose of the car. He glides it in with all those years of experience. Perfectly hits the marks that are so critical. You miss the marks, and you can't couple the fueling and the vent hoses, but no problem for Mario looking to see if they make any changes up front. No wing changes that we can see. They wanted to latch down the Wickerbill latch in the back. They slap a piece of tape on it. Mario has gone in just over 15 seconds. And threading his way out right in front of Robbie Gordon again. So those were almost identical pit stops as Gordon comes in ready to attack Mario. And this is tires here. Remember, Robbie Gordon has all the bravery that you need. Mario has the experience. Look at Gordon. Here on Cole Tires. Back at the front of the field now. There's Mario as he continues his battle with Robbie Gordon just behind him. Gordon, who has had some spectacular runs thus far in the IndyCar and should at just any time score his first victory as well. There are so many drivers, Gordon Johansson among them, that are so ripe for a victory. You have to remember the key to pit stops is not just the time that you spend stopped in the pit lane. It's how quickly you get in and how quickly you get out and complete that uh, first lap on cold tires. That can make a big difference. There's Johansson behind Gordon. So he's trying Danny. to make up from his uh, lengthy pit stop. Danny Sullivan picked up the lead of the race during these pit stops. Now he has completed his stop going 35 laps before he has to. And so as a result, he comes out behind this battle and is now joined by Stefan Johansson with Fittipaldi reinstated as the leader of the race. Johansson is currently in seventh place. You see Sullivan. Look, he's checking his mirrors to see who's behind him. You can see the sticker still on those tires, which we, we say sticker tires all the time. That literally means Goodyear have their own white stickers on the tires designating that they are in fact new and with a code number. That's what we use. That's what we use the slang term sticker tires. That's what we mean by that. So several things have happened. Here is Lynn St. James, local favorite because of her Nike sponsorship. Nike is headquartered here in Portland. Lynn St. James getting her service from the Dick Simon crew. Now, let's consider things that have happened. Johansson had an incredibly long pit stop, nearly 33 seconds. That put him back in the order. He runs in seventh. And Mansell ran straight off the end of the front stretch in his battle with Fittipaldi. That put him behind. And he sits now in third place. So the order is Fittipaldi in the lead, followed by Paul Tracy, Nigel Mansell, Mario Andretti, Robbie Gordon, and Stefan Johansson. So here is a battle for fifth place as Johansson takes a hard look at Robbie Gordon. You see Lynn St. James pulls aside, lets the battle go ahead. But Olivia Griard in the Regency racing car hanging on to Stefan Johansson there. But Gordon's man that he wants to pass is Mario. That's the uh, battle here for fourth place. 
Robbie Gordon driving for A.J. Foyt. A.J. helping him every chance he can get. Robbie having the opportunity to take advantage of Foyt's vast knowledge of the Indy cars. The grand champion, the winning driver ever in the sport. Now, Robbie Gordon obviously is very much in a learning, a learning mode this year. Nigel Mansell takes different lines to most people here. Mike Franifus took Robbie Gordon by the hand up to the festival curve, sat him by the hand up to the festival curve, sat him down on the grandstand and said, look, watch Mansell. He does things differently. And the next day, Robbie Gordon was doing it just like Mansell. But Johansson is running slowly on the back straight. Johansson comes totally off the pace. Gary Terrell, do you know what it is? Well, we're standing by Tony uh, Bettenhausen, Paul Dyatlovich, the entire crew huddling here. The problem on the pit stop was a malfunctioning air jack. That's going to be critical on their next anticipated stop. But now apparently there's a new problem. And I'm not sure that anybody is certain of just what that problem is. Tony, do you have any idea what the problem is at the moment? Yeah, he's, he's lost some gears in the gearbox. Something's happened inside the transmission. So, All right, thank you, Tony. Car's in now, Paul. They jump on it, but this could be a serious problem. Now they've shut off the engine. As they reach for the calling on Stefan Johansson's car, it is still Emerson Fittipaldi in the number four car in front, being chased by his teammate, Paul Tracy, and Nigel Manson. Here at 8 o'clock Eastern. Well, Emerson Fittipaldi threads his way through traffic and in doing so has managed to separate himself from his teammate, second place Paul Tracy. Jan Vegas, do you have an update? Well, speaking of Emerson Fittipaldi, let's remember he has the same type of gearbox that what Stefan Johansson does. It's a transverse gearbox that's in the Penske chassis. They only have five gears. It's transverse means it's mounted longitudinally. What that means is sideways, and therefore it's more aerodynamic. So obviously Roger Penske and the Penske crew must be concerned because Portland is known for being hard on gearboxes. Well, you saw the man who suffered most from it, which is Stefan Johansson, who is now out of the car. And of course, one of the more unique features of the gearbox is the fact that it is sequential, just like a motorcycle. You go one forward for first gear, and then you keep pulling the lever back for second, third, fourth, and fifth. It makes for a faster gear change, and of course, a faster gear change means that you're on the power earlier and faster, you go faster down the straight. You know, when you talk about doing that, though, there are occasions when you may want to go, say, six to four. There are times when under heavy braking you might do that. How would you handle it in that gearbox? Does it change so fast that it works for you? You still have to hit it twice. If you want to go down two gears or three gears, you have to hit it once, twice, or three times. Well, Stefan Johansson has suffered from his gearbox. Here's Gary Gerald. Stefan, we know it was the gearbox problem. Had you not had that problem, did you think you had enough muscle that you could win this race? It was going to be marginal. I think it was the question of, you know, coming down to the laps at the end of the race with the fuel mileage and so on, because it was... He was running green all the time out there, and I was running real, real conservative on the fuel just to be able to attack hard at the end of the race. So, you know, I could, I just wanted to stay close enough to the leaders to be able to attack in the last 20 laps of the race. Now you had a problem on the pit stop with an air jack, I guess, that malfunctioned, so it kind of comes raining and pouring here all at once. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> I hope it's going to change one of these days. We hope so, too. A terrific qualifying effort. We wish you well in Cleveland in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Step on your head. Boy, what a tough one, Paul. And the second time this year that he suffered from that, he had a gearbox failure at Phoenix just past just before the halfway point. Mario Andretti with Robbie Gordon now closing in just behind him. Gordon has come up from time to time to the back of the car, and this now looks like a very serious fight with Al Unser Jr. coming up beginning to challenge Gordon, so it's a three-way battle for fourth place. Al Jr., very, very good in these chasing situations. Robbie Gordon knows that. See the way Gordon moves to the right side of the track under braking. Al Jr. has to take the wide line. But Robbie Gordon will have his hands full trying to fend off Al Jr. Ford Ford versus Chevrolet. On part of the track, the report is rain. So now this sends a whole new factor into this race. What will they do? Stay on these tires, which are very difficult, or go to this kind of tire? Go to a, a full rain tire compound, which if the course is dry in some areas wet and the others could wear down very quickly. 
Well, it could, and the decision is going to be ultimately with the driver. If he thinks he can handle the rain on slick tires, go for it. The biggest problem is it is so dicey and so dangerous and so difficult sometimes that you can fly off the road, and then all chance of a good result is gone. Now, it's not raining on the front straight here by our booth, but it is raining out on the back section, just like it did in a race earlier today. Keeping an eye on this battle and keeping an eye on the clouds as well as Robbie Gordon in the Copenhagen car makes a move to the inside. And look at him lose the back end there. That is one of the places where rain has been reported and it's very slick through there. You can see a drop of rain now, a second one on the camera. So now Robbie Gordon lines up looking for an open room alongside of Mario Andretti. He closes in. And when youth and bravery get into rainy, difficult situations and conditions, they often win out. Experienced, oh, you can see the rain now in our camera lens. Very slippery. But youth and bravery very often makes very fast racing cars when it rains. And now Alan's are